What do we take away from Iowa's 24 to 14 win over Utah State, specifically with the offense? We, of course, were looking to see stark improvement. Did we see that? Yeah. You know, yes and no. We'll talk about it in just a second. Why I'm not pushing the panic button by any means on this offense. This is a big week ahead. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Iowa Floor Covering, their tough core. Click together 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. They've been going on with the special for a while for our viewers here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Check it out at iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. This tough core click together flooring being sold right now at 269 when you install it yourself. That's 269 per foot with self installation. Again, one more time, that's iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. So after further review, what to take away from Iowa's offensive performance? against Utah State. Was the offense improved? Did we see improvement in the run game? Did we see improvement in the passing game? Well, again, yes and no. The run game was not good. I don't think I'm breaking that news to anyone. 2.4 yards per carry for the run game. In fact, I've given grades to a few different facets of the offense, and I'm giving the run game a D. Now, that doesn't mean they don't have plenty of room to improve heading into week two. They have lots of room to improve. 88 yards on Saturday against a group of five school that ranked in the 110s last year in rush defense. Iowa gained just 2.4 yards per rush. And keep in mind, yes, in the college game, sacks take away from rushing numbers. I don't like that little intricacy of the stat sheets and the box scores, but that is the fact of the matter. Iowa only gave up one sack, though. So it's not like sack yardage held down Iowa's average 2.4 yards per rush and again Utah State did not have a very good rush defense last year I watched this game back on tape and I did get a chance to watch the whole thing on television I was at the game Saturday watched the game back on television today I don't know that Iowa was far off I didn't see as many negative plays and I know that sounds like I'm kind of making excuses for the Iowa offense I'm not trying to do that but you go back to watching like Iowa State last year South Dakota State last year those games and Iowa when it's had bad offensive lines, they typically have so many negative rushing plays, especially on first and second down. And you just can't do that when you're trying to stay ahead of the chains. You just kill yourself when you are, you know, second and 14 or certainly like third and 10, third and 11. You just, you're behind the change. It's going to be hard with the way Iowa plays offense. Not saying that I agree with how Iowa generates its offense or tries to generate its offense, but the reality is you got to stay ahead of the chains. Iowa, I felt like, had less negative yardage plays. I couldn't find a stat, a definitive stat on the number of negative yardage plays they had in the run game, but it seems like they had less. And I think part of that is probably an improvement up front. Part of that is, yes, they probably were not playing a real strong rush defense. And then the other part of it is when you have a bigger back like Caleb Johnson, he is a load to bring down. That's a positive. Now, again, I'm not taking away from the fact that 2.4 yards per rush, 88 yards on the day was not good. That is not good. And I said heading into the game that I need to see Iowa get 150, 200 yards against an inferior rush defense. I will say this. I have no doubt in my mind that Utah State is a lot better than they were last year. Remember, they won 11 games two years ago. They're very well coached behind head coach Blake Anderson. They've got a new defensive coordinator. They were down a guy in the interior of that defensive line. They had a lot of attrition turnover there. But I would not be surprised if they finish in the top three or four of the Mountain West. You may say that's you know not really saying much. That's a good conference, folks. Boise State, San Diego State, etc. Good conference. I think they'll finish higher than people think. But I am giving Iowa's run game a D. But I don't think they're stuck in that territory, in that range. I think they were closer, maybe, given the fact that they didn't have as many uh, negative plays on the ground. There were a couple of plays where holes opened up and Caleb Johnson got taken down by the shoelace, so to speak. Same with LaShawn Williams. There were a couple plays that were there. It looked like they were there and kind of the space closed off. So, again, I'm no offensive line guru, but I think they appeared to be closer, albeit against a G5 school. How about pass protection? The offensive line looked a lot better in that regard. In fact, I give them an A-. minus. The only reason I'm not giving them an A+, plus is because, again, they were going up against a D-line that we did not expect to be great and a D-line that was down a starter on the interior. They did give up several hurries. Most of the pressure on Cade McNamara uh, on Saturday was due to extra pressure that Utah State brought. I know there was at least one play where the Iowa back, one time it was LaShawn Williams, uh, where the Iowa back failed to recognize a blitz pickup. The O-line typically did its job in pass protection. I thought Cade had plenty of time 
compare that to last year against South Dakota State, an FCS program, a good FCS program, but an FCS program, when Spencer Petras, yes, he uh, there's no question he was not good in that game. But in that game specifically, pass protection was mediocre at best, and it was not mediocre Saturday against a solid FBS program. Again, we'll see about that defensive line moving forward, but the offensive line definitely was better in pass protection. Now, we could see it break down against Iowa State. Iowa State had some turnover with Will McDonald now gone. This Saturday will be a big, big test. How about the passing offense as a whole? We saw a big play early to Seth Anderson for a touchdown on a nice double move. We had a touchdown to Eric all in the first quarter. Then things went stagnant. All right. Yes, the run game not really assisting much. That doesn't help. Cade did have at least one play where it looked like he aggravated that quad a little bit. Just four catches on the day for Iowa wide receivers. Luke Lachey did have a nice day. No surprise there. Iowa's top tight end. Seven catches for 73 yards. Uh, nearly had eight catches for 80-plus yards and a touchdown. Remember, he kind of had a drop there in the first half. Uh, maybe a little bit of a high and hot throw from Cade, but catchable for a big tight end in, in Luke Lachey down in the red zone. Um, would have probably liked to have had that one back. So I will give Iowa's passing offense a B-. minus. Because I did feel like the pass protection was better as a whole. I thought Seth Anderson, from what I saw, got separation a time or two. There was a, a an overthrown ball or two by Cade McNamara, but for the most part, he was good. The bump Iowa has received in quarterback play, and you pair that with really good tight end play, and I think wide receiver play, they're just as good as they were last year at this time. Now, part of that's because of injuries last year. Remember, Keegan Johnson was out. Nico Ragaini was out. Deontay Vines is out. My point is... There has been improvement based on one game. We've seen improvement in the passing offense. Now we'll see again if that carries over to Iowa State. I'll give the Cyclones one big nod here. They are deep in the defensive backfield, led by TJ Tampa, Jeremiah Cooper, uh, Bo Freiler. They are good back there. So they'll test Iowa and they'll test Cade McNamara. So we'll see how that offensive line holds up. Um, we'll see if Iowa can avoid coverage sacks. And they need to stay healthy, right? That's been a bugaboo for the wide receiver core. And obviously, we're not talking about the defense. I thought the defense was fine. I know there were people talking about the number of rush yards they gave up. For the game, Iowa gave up 116 rush yards. A lot of those came late on Iowa's second team. They gave up 213 passing yards. People were complaining about Iowa's defense not getting home on uh, Cooper Lagasse. I didn't think that was a problem. Lagasse was getting the ball out of the pocket quickly. Again, I attribute that to good coaching from Blake Anderson. Tyrell Vaughn did have 12 receptions for 93 yards, but if it took 12 receptions for him to get to, to 93 yards, um, I think Iowa did its job for the most part. Cooper DeGene did have a pick six that was dropped on a deflection. That would have changed the score and certainly uh, how we perceive things. And Iowa just kept everything in front of them. There's no question the offense needs to be better, but I would not worry about the defense. I thought Jay Higgins was really good. Nick Jackson got isolated on receivers a time or two, and I don't think they expected that. Certainly not excusing Iowa shortcomings, but it is game one. And I do believe that there is reason for optimism. This is a big week against Iowa State. I'll be giving my preview about this game. This is, I think, these next two weeks are going to be telling a big, big story moving forward. Of course, Penn State looms in a, in a few weeks, but Iowa State this week, I'll be dropping a preview here uh, in the coming 24 hours. But just kind of wanted to catch up with you folks uh, to talk about what I saw after watching the game back on tape on this Monday. I'll be live with Mark Rogers on Tuesday over at the Voice of College Football channel, Iowa Football at the Voice of College Football on YouTube. Keep it locked in right there and right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm for coverage all week long leading up to the Cyhawk game.